YouTube. Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. This week, I'm gonna dive in on the trim options available for the Z06. I'm gonna talk through some of the considerations and then share what I'm currently thinking for my Z06 build. Before we get into that though, I wanted to talk for a moment about last week's video or what to many of you may have appeared like a lack thereof. There is indeed a video, however, you likely haven't seen it. Think of this video as two videos in one. There's this video, and then in the description will be a direct link to last week's video, which compares the new Ford GT to the C8 Z06. If you didn't see that video pop up in your feed, you're not the only one. I wanted to assure you that I'm not asleep at the wheel or anything. There was some shenanigans with YouTube that caused this to happen. The high level is that back in February, I recorded that video. Like most growing YouTubers, I recorded one for the bank, so to speak, so that if I was sick, traveled, couldn't quite finish filming or editing, I would have something that I could air that week. The problem with this approach is that you have to keep remembering to push that video out further every week, and if you don't, it goes live. About four months ago, I accidentally forgot to update it, so for a glorious 30 minutes or so, it was live back in March. 32 people got to see it before I pulled that back in. This past week, I got my script written, but I just didn't have time to film. I'd been traveling and just plain ran out of time. So I decided I'd officially air that earlier video. However, YouTube, as I just learned, doesn't trade a video that's aired for even a second in the past as a new video. It doesn't promote to people's feeds and it doesn't recommend it. Unfortunately, this video was really lost to the internet. So feel free to check it out. The content isn't out of date because it's a comparison of why the new Z06 moves the needle more than the new Ford GT did. I think many of you will find it interesting, so I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, apologies for the mess and confusion, on to today's video. As I've worked through all the deep dives on all the larger options, there's been a constant theme for both deciding on options as well as how I've chosen what I'll eventually spec on my own Z06, and that's functionality. Frequently, I've highlighted that I'm generally a function over form person, and that if you look back at all the various options I've covered on the car, many of the considerations for me come down to what it does for the car. How does it affect performance, handling, or weight? Now the fun part about the trim levels here is that this is the first major option I can think of that effectively doesn't affect any of those things. This is almost completely down to personal taste, aesthetics, maybe a dash of comfort and a pinch of luxury, but it all becomes subjective. Sure, there's a difference in what one interior weighs versus another, but the difference is minimal enough that it's not listed by GM. This is where passion and personal taste come to the front and you can personalize your car the way that you want it to be, limited mostly by your imagination and a little bit by your budget. So for those that aren't familiar, the trim levels of the Z06 will be the 1LZ, 2LZ, and 3LZ, which are more or less an analog to the trim levels of the Stingray of 1LT, 2LT, 3LT. Before we get into this though, there are a lot of little things in each trim package, so I'm not gonna read off and describe each little feature. Instead, I'll share the major ones on the side of the screen and I'll talk through any that stand out to me. Note, I'll be mentioning the pricing of some of the options, and this is based off the C8 Stingray prices. Without trying to sound like a broken record, the pricing still isn't out yet, but this is likely very close to the pricing for the Z06, so it's a safe bet to say these prices are in the ballpark. All right, starting out, we've got the 1LZ. You buy the car, this is what you get without any options or extra money. It's bare bones, the simplest, and no frills. Now don't take that to mean that it's cheap. The base interior is a nice place to be and doesn't feel cheap as hopefully any car bumping against 100K should feel. Notably, you can't get the GT2 seats in this trim, though you can opt for the competition seats if you so choose. This is the package that a dedicated racer will likely want the no frills car with the most supportive seat. There's not much else here to note, so we're gonna move on. 2LZ, now we're starting to get into some of the nicer options, including the heated and cooled seats with more available adjustments. The GT2 seat becomes an option. You get a better stereo system. You get some sensor features to make sure that you don't hit another car or get hit. And notably, this package costs about 7,300 more than the 1LZ. Though interestingly, almost all of the additional features are tech improvements rather than aesthetics. Think of it as a car with more functions while not being really over the top. And then there's 3LZ, the creme de la creme. This is the loaded car, more or less. You have tech improvements, comfort improvements, and perhaps biggest, you have interior finish improvements. You get a Napa leather interior, you get carbon fiber kind of scattered about the cabin and the steering wheel. You get eight different interior color options, 
and you get the ability to unlock the level two carbon fiber interior trim package. The 3LZ package costs about $4,700 more than the 2LZ and roughly $12,000 more than the 1LZ. Notice that that jump from two to three is essentially half of the jump from one to two. Some of you may be thinking that 3LZ is a bit too much for the car, but the reality is that cars at this price point increasingly become more about the little details and on the C7 Z06, the 3LZ was one of, if not the most popular trim package. So here are some of my thoughts I have about the different trim levels. I think it largely comes down to factors that matter to each individual buyer. Do they prefer certain fabrics and materials? Do they want non-standard color interiors? How big is their budget? I see trim levels as a way to claw back some of the price if you find you're going a little bit over your budget. Dropping the trim level, especially from a three to a two, will save a nickel, but not lower the perceived quality of what you bought, at least not significantly. That said, the trim packages are about making you feel special, about adding your little unique character to your car, and that last touch of personalization. After all, when you're driving around in the car, you can't see the exterior, but you sure are seeing every square inch of the interior every time you get in. Now you may be thinking, what else? Surely there must be more to it. But unlike some of my other deep dives, there really isn't. Yes, there are some finer points about each of the trim packages that I haven't covered here, but ultimately these packages aren't gonna help you drive faster or get better handling or set lower lap times. What they will do though is speak to you personally. Are you gonna go simple and stayed? Are you gonna live a little bit, maybe splurge for a higher package than you otherwise would? Or are you gonna really dive in and spare no expense? I'm a bit of a firm believer that your car speaks about who you are as a person. It tells the world a bit about who you are, and I say this is one of those few choices for options where you have to listen to your heart more than your wallet and get what you think you might enjoy the most, as long as you can afford it. As for me and my build, I'm leaning 2LZ at the moment. The two must-have options for me are the GT2 seats and heated and ventilated seats. If those were options on the 1LZ, I likely would go that route, however they're not. I like the idea of the 3LZ, but none of those options really call out to me, and it helps me save about $5,000. So here's where my current build sits for those who've been following along. So the big question, where does this leave us on deep dive videos? Is this the last one? No. I will be doing at least one more deep dive video, talking through all the other odds and ends options that I'm interested in, as well as sharing renders of my top two choices for the car. I'm also considering doing another one once the pricing comes out, because that could really change things as we know how much everything is gonna cost. That might be a bit of a recap of all of the other deep dives that I've done with the perspective of cost. So before I close, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who's reached out to me either in the comments or on mid-engine Corvette forum to welcome me for joining. Really appreciate it. I know there have been a ton of comments and I'm doing my best to respond to all of them, but I'm increasingly getting to the point where I get so many comments, I literally don't have time from when one video airs to the next one to respond to everything. I do read all of them, so please keep them coming. And I do really appreciate everybody reaching out, but it's getting to be a little more than what a single person can manage. So thank you so much for reaching out. I really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, for it out.